Hi everyone, it's Don from Crux Terminatus and today I have a snakeskin effect that you can use for uh, any model you like but this one is a free blade knight. Uh, so starting off it's just the bog standard um, skeletal parts. I base coat with black and then I spray with sort of bolt gun metal and then I use the Vallejo copper um, that's the true metallic uh, copper. I use that for all the sort of piston housings um, and, and like venti parts and all these kind of things that I see all over uh, the structure. I just think it looks quite steampunky uh, and I quite like it. So all my all my copper work is done like that. And this is me putting down the base colour for the scales. So this is this is the part that you'll see in between the scales. Uh, and this time I've decided to go for blazing orange and I'm going to use um, golden yellow uh, as the, the, the scale pattern itself. So this is a bit of netting that I got from uh, one of my friends was uh, had bought his wife some flowers and I happened to be around at their house and I, I saw it and I thought oh, I could use that I wonder if this will work and um, I'm happy to say that it does it would be great if you had four hands though uh, because it's really really difficult to get it to, to stick close to the painted surface um, and you really want that because the closer you are, the sharper the lines are. And if any part comes away from the surface when you're spraying, it gives you a more diffuse uh, pattern. So it's it's better to be tight against the painted surf sorry the surface you're trying to paint. Um, and you'll see here I, I I get really concerned about how tight I can possibly hold it to make it set that form but eventually um, I decide that that's good enough and I paint it quite a few different times with this uh, golden yellow colour but the, the trick is not to move the, the netting at all and keep it nice and steady and that'll give you some nice crisp designs um, afterwards. So this is, is basically what it looks like when it's done. I've painted that three or four times now just to make sure I've got good coverage and then this is the moment of truth when you take off this this wrapper what does it look like and bingo you've got yourself some dragon scales or you know reptile scales or fish or snake or whatever you you, you fancy doing but mine's is um i'm quite happy with the look of it um it's it's quite orangey in on this light it's actually slightly truer yellow in, in natural light but uh, the effect is exactly the same regardless I decided that a black trim would, would help the uh, the middle parts of the panels pop out. Um, so I painted all around them just with flat black. And after I had finished the, uh, the, the panel lines, what I decided to do is I would uh, write the name. And I use Defont as a website and I put it on my phone. And whenever I'm trying to paint a nameplate or something, I always type the name of it into Defont. Uh, in Old English and then it gives me that sort of gothic writing and I just copy it from there on to the model. Uh, but that's what it looks like when it's finished. I say it's, you know, as, as models go, I'm quite pleased with it. I think it would look pretty cool on a, on a tabletop somewhere. But uh, this one's destined for just my own private collection. Uh, I did something similar in the past for a collector who wanted it in green, but this one's just for, just for me. Um, the rest of the stuff's just bog standard, really. A black wash over the the copper parts, and there's a Reichland flesh shade wash uh, and panel wash over the main armor panels, and in between all the cracks and stuff that you can see. Uh, it's not going to win any awards. I'm very happy with it, and considering it looks like it's a fake knight kit in the first place, I'm very pleased that it's now done out the way, and I can get onto my Grey Knights project. So I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye bye.